be also extended to the other. That each and every one of us, being an adult, will have the mindset of the little one. But this is the mind, mindset where reason and desire of being. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father, we commit everyone here in this so that hand. Even as there are many ready to commend this ability to you. For thou hast reserved blessings for each of the commandments and each of the parts of this country. Today we pray that this one who have been any bless them with good health, bless them with favor, divine intervent, intervention, give unto them that in all matters they will have victory that come from here. No, prosper them in health, prosper them in love life, prosper them materially, prosper them spiritually in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We also pray that you increase the level of commitment, dedication, and steadfastness, faithfulness also unto you, them that are faithful unto him. Even so, we ask for many are dead that are yet to come. Even so, we ask also for many are dead that might not even come today. Whatever may be the case, will the Spirit divine intervene in all matters? Thou art a spirit that cannot be constrained or restricted or limited by distance and time and space. Thou art everywhere. Traverse the whole world, mighty Father, and touch your faithful children of God. Wherever they are, in your houses, at workplaces, and home, at hospitals, and prison, including those ones who have been unjustly locked up by the heavens of Satan. Loosen up the prison wall and the gate. Set free your children. There are those under oppression and captivity. Set them free, deliver them from captivity and affliction. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Come, O oh, great spirit of truth. Come and bless your children. Come and favor your children. Come and intervene. Come and intercede. Come and grant victory unto your faithful children. Thank you for the liberty and freedom that has given unto us. Members of Christ, Africa, brother of the Church of Star, who worship in prayer and in truth, free from intimidation and harassment, free from all form of molestation, free from every form of inarticulate control or selfish privilege. Today we can pray to boldly worship you, singing and praising the Lord. Take glory in all these wonderful things you are doing, for it is marvelous in our eyes. For then it is not work. So we give you glory, we give you honor. Accept it from all, my Father, those things that we ask, we bless us. Thank you all. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everlasting Father, we thank thee, O Lord, for Satan has said he would not have children to have thee. For thou hast always said that as you have children already assigned and sent to this world. You will connect them and choose them and bring them to thyself at their own appointed time. Today, mighty Father, thou hast chosen two of the little ones to serve thee as one for four thousand days. Thou will bless them today. For then they descend in thy mind and put power in them. Descend and take charge. Descend, mighty Father, and put Satan to shame by saying you have power to choose their own and purify, sanctify, use them. As vessels of honor, speak for the master's view. Thank you, Father, for no man can obey the order. No man can bless the order. No one can sanctify the order. If thou is not first of all sanctified today and approve, therefore we pray thee to come today, mighty and everlasting Father. Approve of our gathering today. Approve of this ordination today, mighty Father. Even as thou hast previously today, the ones that came first. Ordain this one and continue to ordain them as they come. Let them come and stop the instead and the For thou have children more than enough to have you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The everlasting Father, we pray that thou take absolute control over centenary cathedral. Take charge, take the money, spiritually, physically. Let no power penetrate to disrupt your activity. Let no force spiritually motivate, physically motivate, or you forget it. Come in here at any time of the day or night to disrupt us or put into confusion your gathering, your faithful gathering. Thank you, Father, for manifesting. Manifest your power and show the mighty that thou art the mighty one, no one is like you. Take the union and take charge and let only your will and be done, even now and forevermore. Let's have some of those people take the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and honor be unto the heavenly Father. In the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's start. Previous aggression. Kicks you down to be you know. In the number of number of you now and forevermore. Amen.
So we had to go through this, even without our consent. Yes. Our parents have had to take us without our consent to go and initiate into some sort of call in the name of guidance, in, in the name of protection, in the name of prosperity. That you want your children to prosper. So you initiate them to different steps. But we are concerned with the love that drives parents towards so taking children either to God or to Satan. We are saying that children of God must not take the little ones to Satan, but must follow the food step of the parents of old who, having the law in their heart towards the well being of their children, towards ensuring that the children have good health, grow, prosper and live a fulfilled life, took them to Christ and said to the disciples, please, permit us. We have enemies we know. These enemies are coming against us and our children. We desire that we bring these children unto God for him to place his hand and bless them. But we know, we believe, that if only our Lord Jesus Christ would place his holy hand on these little children who are innocent and bless them, the enemies will not be able to destroy their life. The enemies will not be able to destroy their, their, their future. The enemies will not be able to attack their health. It was at that point that that sound a bit like stupid to the, 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 the disciples, wondering why should parents be so concerned about the safety when they are supposed to believe that God is able to protect the life and say, go away from here. Take these children. They are very noisy. They are disturbing. The Lord requires a silent move. Take these children away. And so they try to harass and chase away the parents with those children. But Christ quickly intervened and said to them, suffer not little children to come before me. For the kingdom of God that you have seen, for which you are a preacher, you are a preacher of the kingdom of God. This kingdom of God belongs to this little one. They have to start early. That greetings to the parents who have had to bring them early to show them the way to go, rather than taking them. But there are some other parents who have taken their own children to the to the shrine and show them the way because the truth is this if you take the children to the shrine at a time without their consent and you paint an image in their head, a picture in their head, a belief that there are enemies that want them dead and that the reason why they have to accept whatever they are told to do by the priest in the shrine is because you want them to be alive, that the enemies will not hurt them and they will be successful. You have printed a message. It remains in their head. As they grow up without you, they begin to initiate themselves. They begin to believe in some sort of charm. And they begin to worship idols and practice charms. And that's why you see, cultism has increased. Evil has increased because parents have undertaken to show the, 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 the children early enough the way to idol worshiping, the way to idol. Idolatry, the way to satanic beliefs, and that is the, the cause of the unfortunate situation we have. But thankfully, unto children of God, that we still have parents who will preach to the children. This house is a house of God. I do not want to hear that you join anything. Believe in God, trust in the Father, always pray fast, the Father will answer you. And this parent talking to the, 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 to the children in this manner, they are also living a memory that the children will have to grow with. Remember, the word of God says, bring up the children in a manner that you desire. For when they grow up, 
they hardly will depart from it. Anywhere you show them early, if you show them the way to godliness early, they will not depart from it, except those ones that are marked for, for perdition. A child that is marked for perdition, even if you show the child early, the way to godliness, as the child grows up, the child may have to choose to depart from it. And so it will not be said to be the fault of the parent. But the parent, first of all, must discharge their responsibility early. Show the little child the way to God early. Early in the life of that child. So our Lord Jesus Christ rebuked the disciples who tried to disrupt or frustrate the attempt by those parents taking the little children for Christ to bless them so that they have a better future and Christ embraced them. Our Lord Jesus Christ embraced them. And, and that's why up to today, children enjoy the warm embrace of God at all times. Children are the pride of the house of God, the pride of the kingdom of God. Children are used everywhere to illustrate who a child of God should be like, or what the kingdom of God ought to be, or what it is, really, as an example to, to believe. Hallelujah! 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 Read oh. the first Bible lesson and the book, and the second Bible lesson as well. Yes! Uh, well, let me take it to Matthew 19, verse 13 to 14. Then we are there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hand on them and pray. And it is that we will do them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven, the name of the Lord. Amen. Yes. in the name of protection and for the well-being or prosperity of that child. First of all, we must realize that the only God that gives children, we must also realize that we are channels through which children come into this world. As a channel, you are not concerned as it is the case. We are not even aware of what destiny the children in our houses 
have. We are not aware of what their mission on earth has. We are not aware of what the Lord God intends to use them to do on earth. So day to day you see manifestation. So it is not, it is not and should not be you are worried about the safety of a child that originally belongs to God. You are only a caretaker. God knows how to care for his own. He knows how to protect his own. The word of God says that anyone who finds his way to godliness, that God shall open ears to hear him. And that whatsoever such a person shall ask, he shall receive. If he knock for grace, the doors will be open. If he seek, he shall find. If he pray, the Father will answer. And that if the canal fell, if the, if the biological fathers and mother, who of course abided in sin, filled with sin and ungodliness, who even at that love their children to the extent that they think well about their children, even though some, some parents may not think well about their, their children. But generally, parents are meant to think well and care and provide the needs, provide the needs of the little one that God has given unto them. And the word of God is saying, why should anyone be afraid not to trust that the father can protect or is able to protect and preserve the life of this little one. If you, a sinner that you are, have that care and love and passion towards the safety of the child, which you did not bring to, 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 to this world. How the child end up in the house, you don't know. He who brings the child to pass through you to this earth has a greater duty of care to protect, to preserve the life of that child to the full manifestation of what he intended that child to be. So it should not be too much of your, your problem. Leave what is not your worry. The father who brings these children knows how to care for them. He knows how to guide them to success. He knows how to guide them and even guide them out of trouble. He knows how to deliver them from temptation. He knows how to deliver them from the hands of the wicked one. He knows. He knows. You just show them the way. Show them the way to godliness. Show them the way and tell them to trust that you, you have all your life trusted in this channel and you cannot say you have regrets. You cannot say you are ever disappointed. You cannot say that the enemy succeeded. No. If they succeeded, you will not have even had that child because the plan of the wicked is that you should not even have a child. And even if you succeed to have, they destroy the child. And so it is the grace of God upon your life because of your faith and belief that your children are alive and healthy. Tell the children that you trusted in this God. And that is why you are alive. And that's why the child is alive. And that if the child also trusts, Greater things await the child because things keep getting better and better. The mercies and the love of God, the grace of God, increasing by the day. Increasing. So those who shall trust in God today shall enjoy greater grace than those of yesterday because God is concerned with preservation of faith. And so how faith is preserved is ensuring that there is abundant grace To be able to boost the, 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 the confidence of believers. So the, the Holy Father will give more than any of us can give to the children. He cares greater than any of you can care. He, of course, will provide greater needs 
of the children than yourself. You just worry over what you are not supposed to worry. And when you get on worrying and disturbing yourself, you veer off the road. You misguide the children. You mislead them. You let them astray. At a, at a very tender age, that their concerns are not even subtle. So, beloved Christian and brethren, let us retreat. It is not late. It is not late. Guide your children back to godliness. Show them the way. Tell them, children, you see, they are spirits. Even a child born today will hear. A child born into this world here. A child in the womb hears. A child in the womb, when you speak, they hear. How much more when they have been born, they hear. Because they are sweet. So tell them at that tender age, trust in God. He will never disappoint you. Have faith in God. He will never fail you. As you grow up to adulthood, let the whole of your trust, let the whole of your life be dependent in Him alone. Let nobody do not listen to your father or your mother or your brother or your uncle or your auntie who is giving you a contrary view to life that there is a, any other way to succeed other than by godliness, believing, following God, worship God. Tell them. Tell them. Some of you you hardly will tell your children that they should not mind or they should not accept anybody who is telling them not to worship God or to come and worship something else. But what you'll be quick to tell them, if anybody gives you biscuits, don't collect it. If anybody gives you sweets, say your, your mommy say you should not take sweet from anybody. Even if it is your uncle that said, take, come and tell your your mom, but you will not tell them also, so that they grow with it. That they should learn how to depend and trust God, and that if anybody tell them not to trust God, that God is not the best, that they should not accept it. These are the way to bring them up. Let the whole of your advice, your admonition be on God, God, God. They will grow with it. And then as they grow up, they will be professing faith. They will be professing faith. I trust the father. You see a little child say, I trust the father. I know I'm all right. I know the father will heal me. You are sick. Say, no. But you are not feeling well. Say, the father has already healed me. That thought is not from the blues. Is taught from the house. That is the mindset of the parents. That is the mindset of somebody in the house. If the parents do not have such a mindset, there must be someone around that child that has such a mindset, and the child will grab it and believe it. And the child begins to build his or herself on that. And before you know, the child is standing firm, rooted, stabilized in faith. To the glory of God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Three happy days. Men of this world struggle to be quick assets, struggle, work very hard to be quick wealth, property, estates. Landed properties and name them to their children. For the greatest asset, the greatest asset that as a father, as a mother, you can bequeath to any of your children is trusting God. Trusting God is the greatest asset. 
leave a legacy whereby your children following it or holding and running your legacy will lead them to godliness. Talk faith to your children. Talk faith to your children. Let them trust in faith. Let them live by faith. But the word of God has said that a time shall come and that time is now where believers will not be moved by the thing they see or the thing they hear, but by faith. Because there are a lot of trouble. There are a lot of wahala. There are a lot of tears, a lot of sorrows, a lot of pain. There are a lot of issues in this world. So we need to activate faith and live by faith. The world as it is, somebody propounds a theory that this world, he can see that a time will come where it will be a place where only the fittest shall survive. And then it was a simply food survival of the fittest. It was an economic theory propounded. Today we have seen that truly, truly, for you to survive in this world is not easy. It is a case of survival of the fittest. So, at one time, one was living in a duplex, a rented apartment in Jaruke. A time comes where the person cannot afford the cost of living in a duplex in Jaruke. That means the person is not fit again to live in Jaruke. Circumstances have changed, situation have changed. The person has to shift to so where the person condition fits. And then the person moves to Omagwa uh, 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 and stay in a three bedroom flat. And then after a couple of years, the person's situation has changed so that the person will not be fitted again to be able to pay the cost to put the bill of staying in a three bedroom apartment or flat in Omagwa. And then the person moves to Ipo Echi. Ipo Echi. And then says, I want a self, a self con. My children have all graduated, they are on their own. You know, we don't need a big house. Who told you? <laughs> So the reason is not because your children have graduated and have moved on and you do not have need for a, a big house. The reason is because you need to survive and your present condition does not suit so that you can comfortably uh, uh, afford the cost of staying in a trade bedroom. Survival of the people. It is a principle, an economic principle propounded by a, an economist several years ago. And today it's in book. It's applying like it was said yesterday. Now Paul loudly said that believers shall live by faith. He said this thing in those days that a time shall come where situation, circumstances, things will become so twisted. Faith will become doubtful. There will be so much trouble, so much wahala, stress. Evil shall manifest in different forms, looking as if there is no God. The enemy shall descend heavily against the faithful children of God. In a manner that the children of God, if they are not strong in faith, they may become helpless. They may be appearing like those in hopeless situations. And Paul says that at such a time, those that shall survive and still maintain the belief, for them to continue, they must live by faith, not the things they see. Because the things they see will so panic them, scare them. Not by the thing they hear, 
Because the things that they, they hear will so panic them and scare them. But that anyone who shall live by faith will survive. Because God the Father so desires that those who shall remain at that time must use faith as a shield. So if you do not show the little children right now the way to fit for you to help, now that you still have a say in their life, because there come a time where a little child will say, mom, I, I, I've had you, but you know I also have a right. He said, yes, if you are a civil father or a civil mother, you will agree with that child that the child has the right. But if you are not civil, if they shut up your mouth, who dare you say you have a right? But that child, the truth is that the child has a right. But the, the, there was a time where the child, though has a right inherent, but did not know. The child did not know that the, he, he or she has a right. That is the age that you use to effect it. That is the age of implementation. That is the age of show him the way. That is the age of touch, touch lighting. It is the age of touch lighting. Show the way, light the touch and hand it over the, the, to the child. He said, this is the way. It may be dark, but keep on holding this touch and pure. Persevere, you will get through this dark path and get to a greater life where you don't need to hold this torch. Ho! Oh, Ho! Oh, Ho! Oh. Ho! Oh. Beloved and brethren, if you do not show the little one the appropriate channel to faith, and then talk to them to be consistent. Tell them to be consistent. No matter how rough, no matter the weight, let them be consistent. For trouble lasts for a moment. For the devil does not have a final say. Even in the midst of temptation, tell them to persevere and trust the father, that the father will get them out of that trouble, get them out of a situation that is undesired and unacceptable. Just tell them that what they need is perseverance. Because even you as an adult, as an adult, for you to succeed in a chosen profession, for you to have a breakthrough in whatever you do, you need perseverance. You just need to endure. You need to hang on there. And this you must let the children to know that they must not easily back out. They must not easily quit. They must not easily look for an alternative route. For it is not always the best to look for an alternative route when you are meant to endure and persevere and allow the glory of God to shine upon your life. And so the point being made is that if parents are sinners we are, but then we have so much love in our heart that you struggle to even pay the school fees of the children. You deny yourself some sort of comfort to make sure that the children's school fees are paid. Then, how much love do you think is in God towards the children? Do you think you care better? Do you think that you love the, the, the children more than he who created them? No, certainly no. So he who created a thing or who created a, a person cares far more better and loves far more better than the caretaker. It's like you building a house. And then after the build, you have spent so much money to build the house. But because you need somebody to look after the place, and then you appointed a caretaker, he said, stay here, give me situation reports, 
make sure everything is fine. The caretaker will never, will never value that property than yourself. You know how much money you have put in there. It is your personal sacrifice. It is your personal in, in, investment. So nobody will come and love your child more than yourself. Let no child feel that your mother who is always chastising you, who is always rebuking you, who is always on your neck, hates you. Don't think so. As it is, some parents or some brethren or some adults may have to talk to children who are not directly their children. And you try to paint an image, you try to paint a picture, you try to insinuate to their belief that their parents do not love them after all. Why? Because either the father or the mother always shout at them and so no. <clears throat> Nobody ever loves another person child greater than his own. There are few instances. There are few, if time permit us to go into it, you will see that there are few instances where one who directly give birth to a child will not have love for that child. But that is not that is to that is not for you to generalize. Exception exists. And I will tell you why. There are situations where you have a, a child, but you and that child are not compatible. The reason is that you are a channel. That is even the more reason why you have to believe that you are a channel and nothing more. You are a channel. You are a caretaker, nothing more. Because you cannot create a child. You cannot detect, you cannot decide. From where do you want the children that will come through you to come from? No, you don't have such. Because the word of God says that who knows the mind of God? Who is his advisor? Who has ever advised God? No, nobody. So the father chooses what to do. From which planet to bring a child to which house? He can choose to bring a child from a planet that is is an opposing planet to where you, you come from. And so you have someone in the house who is like your, your enemy. In the house. And then, of course, the manifestation will come strongly from either the father or the mother, depending on who is on the, the opposing side. And having become an adult, the manifestation has taken place. The consciousness of the hatred has become mature. And so if it, if, uh, if it is the father, the father begins to manifest a lot of hatred. And the child will decide, see, how come we are three in this house? Three children in this house. How come they choose to hate me like this? Is it that someone else gave birth to me? Is it that I'm not of this house? And somewhat, sometimes children have had to summon courage to ask their parents, Are you really my father? Because I, I can't understand this hatred. What have I done to you? And despite intervention by friend, by relation, nothing will change. The hatred is not of this world. It is a spiritual thing. From where you come from, from that child come from, it is beyond you and the child. It is beyond you and the child. And at the time that the child is still young, it looks as if the child actually has so much love for you that you are the one that does not love the child. As that child begins to grow to 
old age of matter, maturity. The, the spirit begin to mature, and that child will begin to show. And then they will say, eh, now spoil where they spoil that child. Now indoctrination. It's not indoctrination. Full manifestation. There are two personalities not compatible in any way. In some cases, it could be so strong, the enmity could be so strong that even the parent will not want to train that child, that particular child. And the child will have to struggle like one without a father or mother. But God who is God, who knows that it is not the fault of the child, but the creator just chooses to bring that child from an opposing planet will not allow that child to suffer hopelessly. He will find a way to give a helping hand, an independent hand, to help that child to become something. Again, the wish of the parents. Hallelujah. 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 And that is why today some persons have, been, have had to become something or successful. And when you go close to them, you hear one or two of them saying, if not for God, this is my, 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 my father. I won't even give him a cup of water to drink. Because if not for God, I would have died. He wanted me dead. He never wanted any good thing in my life. Some will say, if not for God, this my mother, I will not even drink her peace or good morning or do anything. But what do I do? So you see that kind of thing. The point we are making is that, that let nobody take the place of things that you can take the place of God in terms of caring and for the protection of the, the children. They are not your own. You are a channel, a caretaker. God the Father has created them, owns them. He cares for them. He will provide. He will, of course, protect their life. You do not say it is out of love and the fear that somebody may hurt them. To now show them a way to go and be a cultist or initiate for the safety of that. Show, show them the way to God. Leave it at, at that. Tell them that whenever they have need, they should call on the Father, that He will answer them. Because the Word of God in the second Bible lesson is whosoever believe that whenever they ask, they shall receive. If they call on God, God shall answer. If they knock the door, the, the door shall open gracefully. If they seek, they shall find. And that it is our fathers in heaven good pleasure that they that depend on him who have their prayers answered so that the faith in them will be sustained and maintained. And that if we, being carnal parents, have so much love to care for the children so that if they ask for food or bread, you won't give them a sick. If they ask for fish, you won't give them a snake. You give your parents, you, sorry, you, you give the, the children what they need. Then you should know that if you as a caretaker provide for the need the best you can, in the best way you can, then your father who created you and created that child, which you call my son, has greater duty to care, to provide, and he will not fail. God will never fail to provide what he has to provide for each and every one of us. Forever, he will never fail. And so that is why, whether or not your carnal father or mother perform his or her own responsibility, whether or not, God, whose sole responsibility is to care, will override and care and provide that the failure of your father or mother to care will not mean anything. You will be that which God has destined you to be in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Three, happy chair. That is why 
Some persons have had to become something today to the shape of their parents. Yes, let's through the torch. But again, it is not, if you happen to be one of such children or parents, do not feel bad. It is not your fault. You didn't create yourself. Nobody will just hate his, the son or, or, or daughter. But in just circumstances beyond your control, you were created from a, a planet. And ordinarily, nobody should come to your house to dwell from the opposing planet. You see, when you read the, the work of Paul, Paul said that the flesh and the spirit are contrary to each other, are at war, that they are at war. The flesh and the spirit, they are at war. Be contrary to each other. So, they that are of the earth are earthly. They that are of heaven are heavenly. So, depending on from where you were created from, so you could come in here and begin to act contrary to each other. You just need to understand this. <laughs> Read the golden text. Read the golden text. Show the children the way. Let them obey God. Let them trust in God. Let them worship the Father. Do the best you can. Don't go out of your way. Never go out of your way. Our golden text comes from Ephesians. Let your love and the things you do for the children be founded on a firm, solid, established foundation of faith. Do not go out of faith. But the word of God says that other foundation can no man lay other than that which has been laid. Which foundation is in the teachings of Christ Jesus? There is a foundation already laid and established. Our duty as parents is to help the children to grow and then build their faith on, upon a solid foundation already made and they will grow and prosper. For if you teach them on a false foundation, you have misled the child, and it will haunt the child of you. And you see, funny enough, parents who are given to misleading their, their, their children have a way of trying to withdraw and deny that it's not their fault and keep the blame on, on the child. Because nobody identifies with failure. Parents, I have seen it. Parents who are given to misleading their children at a tender age, when failure comes, they do not accept responsibility. They shift. They, they will just shift away and blame it on, on the child. So let everyone know his or her limits. Play your part. Leave the rest. Leave the rest. Don't go out of your way. Don't go out of the way of godliness. In a bit to say, I'm doing, I love my son. I love my, my daughter. I want the best. You want your best or the best for him or for her. In what way? In what manner? In what manner? Yes. Our body text comes from Ephesians chapter 6, 1 to 2. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment in the name of our Lord. Amen. Beloved children, you are all very quiet now, no noise, because the word of God has come fully to you. So, continue in obedience. That God, the Father who has created you, did not bring you to come and fail on earth. He brought you to come and live and accomplish a mission. But we all have a mission on earth. And no man can ask that accomplish his own and then venture into another person's assignment. It's not possible. You may think you can do that, but on that spiritual law, you can only do what you are trying to do. 
You can only do what you are trying to do. You can only do what you are destined to do. And that's why we have predestination. You cannot exceed it. And so let us guide everyone to live a full life of accomplishment, to accomplish his or her dream according to the will of God consigning the person. And so, children, if you obey your, your parents, as it is said, in that golden text, it will be well with you. For greater obedience is it, like the word of God says in the second Bible lesson. He said, if we, as carnal as we are, as wicked as we are, we can, in our wickedness, think well, think good about the children and provide their needs, how much more? The father of the spirits, how much love do you think he has? How much care do you think he has? Now, if the children are encouraged or charged or enjoined to obey their parents who are um, sinners or carnal, how much blessing will they receive if they obey the Father of the Spirit? If they obey God, how much blessing? Just, I don't know if you can imagine the blessing that will come to a child whose obedience is more on, onto God. For the word of God says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. So that it will be well with you all the days of your life. All the days of your life. So you are charged to obey them, yes. If you obey them, it will be well with you. There's no denying of that fact. But like the, 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 the father will always say that he used earthly things to illustrate and compare and give a clear picture of spiritual things. If, if the word of God says to us that if a carnal man, who of course is always given to anger, imagine sometimes how you beat Child, mercilessly. Sometimes you even say, I will kill you. you see? And your actions show that fully you can kill the child. But the next minute, you say, You did stupid boy. Come and take this right and eat. So now, if as bad as your mind is towards the child, because of what Pro provocation. And you still can reverse yourself and show love. How much more? The, the father. How much more? The father will show love and care. Now, the advice is now to the children. He said, children, obey your parents so that it will be well with you. So now you can now compare it. If the children are meant to obey their, their carnal parents, for it to be well with them all the days of their life. Just imagine the prosperity. Imagine the good health. Imagine the protection. Imagine the good fortune. Imagine what life will be. How sweet the life of a child will be. Whose obedience is unto God. So let all children obey the Father. Keep to the, the, the instructions of God. Hold on to faith. Believe and trust in, in God. Do not believe that the Father believe that the Father is the all and all. In everything, trust Him. In your examination for you to be successful, trust in the Father. When you enter into the exam as a little child, trust the Father. Put faith to action. When you have to write exam, when you have to write exam. Use your hand to do an inscription. O, O, O. Pray a quick, short prayer. You don't need to kneel down. Just stay where you are in the classroom. Bend your head. Call the Father. Say, Holy Father, please come and write for me. I want to have the best result. 
I know that you are the author of knowledge and wisdom. The same wisdom and knowledge that whatever I will write will be the correct one. Now, when you write, the Father will fail you. Since you have prayed and you have, you know, he scripted, oh, 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 the Father has taken charge. And then, learn also to, to fast. When you are going to write exams, tell your mommy, today, I want to be the best in the classroom. Last time, I didn't do well. This one, I want to fast, to go and write. I will only eat after the exam. Wonderful. There is no child that will undertake such a spiritual exercise that God will fail that child. No way. God will fail you. If you have not been doing well academically, just try it. This is a simple age group for academic excellence. Even if you are not very smart, but then you have an examination to write, like those writing while you have been writing while and you keep having one issue and so on. Throw out the, the period, be on fasting. You will have results that will shock everybody. I have personally had to try it on several brethren that have had to come, come to us for prayer, for um, a, a, a examination software. And we said, look, just be on, on fast. You see, it, the result will be there clearly because you are not the one. You have now decided to trust the Father and have shifted the responsibility for you to be successful to the Holy Father. God does not, it is not in his nature to fail. He will not fail. Pass and go and write your exam. Train the children in the, in the classes where you have your, your, your Sabbath classes. At home, the parents, tell them, tell the children to believe and trust. Yesterday, eh, one of the little ones came into the vestry with two viral pens. And I was looking what that was for. And he said, I want to write exam. And I want the father and you to pray over this pen. I marvel in my heart. Because those were the things we did while we were very young. You see, you put faith to action, and it worked. And gladly we have to receive it, and we pray. And I know that that child will come back to testify in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And on top of that, the child deep hand into the pocket. He said, I do petty trading to assist me in the school. And of recent, business has been a bit sluggish. Now I have the capital here. I want the father and you to bless it. That when I use it to buy, I will sell and make profits. You see, these are little ones. To imagine the faith. Can God the Father fail such a child? Cannot fail. Put faith to action. Put faith to action. You will live. Believers must live by faith. The time is now. Do not trust in whatever you think you know. It will fail you. Your knowledge, your experience, the experience, everything will fail you. Always trust in, no matter what you know. Keep aside what you know. Always know that God is the or the ultimate because he works better when you give him the, the, the space work with him work with him follow him tell him I trust you 
I do not think my ability can carry me. I do not think my knowledge can sustain me. I do not even know how far I can go. If I have to trust in what I know, I don't know how far, but I know that with you, I will go very far. Wonderful. You will see how successful. There are small, small principles and formulas with God to success. So we leave you at that. Beloved Christian and brethren, a word is enough for the wife. You are here, let him hear. And Father bless you for even now and forevermore. Let them praise you, 